To start a new file, you always go to the file menu up in the upper left hand corner and you type or tap new. Make sure that it says that it's set for iPad. So tap on that, tap on it again. Even if it says it, double check to make sure. Because if you try to choose any other file, then what happens is the iPad is going to crash on you and you'll end up losing your work. So iPad is what you want it to be set for. Then choose a transparent background so there's absolutely nothing in the file and hit create. When you do that, you get a file that looks like this. So it's got nothing in it. You see that grid in the background. That means that it's completely and totally empty. And then from this point, you can start adding things however you want. If you look on the left hand side, you have all your tools. If you tap on them and tap again, you have all your options. You can see a preview of what the mark is going to look like. You see the different tips that you can use. And if you scroll along the side, you'll see all the different options on how you can change this tool so that it looks different. If you start changing things, then um, you'll see that in preview, in the preview window, you'll see that change. If you change it drastically and you want it to go back to its original form, just tap reset and it resets it back to its original spot. So every tool has that. As you click around, you look, they show you different ways they make marks, different options, right? Can't go through every single one to show you how they work. It would take way too much time. So the best way to handle that would be just to go through and trial and error, try things out. Nice thing with digital work is that it doesn't cost you anything and you can save, 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 save. And then of course, delete later when you, if you decide you don't like it. This tool right here, this is your eraser tool, different tips and whatnot. Um, and of course you can change size here in the window. You can see there's a slider for that and there's one for opacity. So, you know, how thick and thin, how much it's gonna take off at any one point in time they'll do that there okay so clicking across on the right hand side of the screen you have your color palette if you tap that you have all your options there you can tap the box to change color that way you can use the sliders to change the hue the saturation the value and customize it that way or you can use the presets which are right there in that window um, you can also just scroll up and down on the presets there by putting your finger over that list or that uh, group of boxes and then moving up and down so I'm gonna start with green just because why not right and then I'm gonna go back over and choose the pencil tool tap it and I'm gonna use the wedge tip because to me it looks a lot like a marker and that's what I want to work with to start making marks you just touch the screen and they start to appear at the bottom you have a slider which shows you a preview of how large the mark you're gonna make is going to be right so you can see and then, of course, there's the opacity slider, which shows how thick of a mark you're going to leave when you actually start to mark on the screen. You'll see a preview up in the middle and then down low, too. So I'm going to set it for 100%, and then I'm just going to start adding some text. Since we're doing a graffiti project, I started with just the word graffiti. Um, it's okay. I think it could be better, but what you really want to go to, what you really try to want to want to accomplish with this is you want smooth lines, you want a lot of flow. Um, that only comes with practice and that comes with time. Usually, when people start, they um, show hesitation marks, so their lines look lumpy and clumpy. That's not your fault, though. When you're first starting this, of course, you're nervous, you're thinking about things, you're not just doing them. And because you're moving slowly across the screen, you have a tendency to leave like hesitation marks, right? That will only go away with practice. So the more you do it, the more fluid your line work will be and um, the better qualities you'll get out of your, your tag. So if I don't like what I have here down in the lower right hand corner, there are arrows. There's the back arrow you see, it takes you steps back, right? The forward arrow will bring it back, okay? So you can go back and forth. Usually it's about 25, it re remembers 25 changes. So you, you, it doesn't, it's not an infinite history, but it'll get you back uh, pretty, pretty significantly. So I'm gonna try this again. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm catching a cold. Um, there we go. So a little better, I don't know, a little happier with it. 
Um, if I wanted to use this as a template, though, let's just say that I want to make some subtle changes, uh, but I, in general, like what I got here, what I can do is I can go down to the lower right, left-hand corner, excuse me, left-hand corner, and there's three boxes stacked on top of each other. That's your layer menu. When you tap on that, this is what appears. There's a plus sign in the lower corner. If you tap that, you add a new layer. And with the blue line around that box that tells you that that layer is on and active, that's the one you're working on, you can come back and you can choose a different color so you can see what you're doing. You can then trace what you already have, but change it subtly, right, to see if you can come up with a better tag, a better script. Right, similar, a little different, you know, just trying some things out. If I tap, tap the layer menu, you can see them stacked. To move layers around, what you do is the three lines off to the right-hand side on that layer palette. I'm gonna go ahead and touch that, see? That lifts the layer up off the background and then you can drag it down underneath and you see it flip-flops like that and back and forth. There's an eyeball icon there next to the little preview window. If you tap that, it turns that off temporarily. You can turn it back on. Um, of course, that stays there for as long as you want. If you decide that you want to get rid of it, you're, you don't like that, you hit the trash can, and um, it'll ask you if you want to delete. If you do, you hit delete. If not, you hit cancel. And um, there you go. And essentially, you just keep on adding layers and practicing until you get a script that you think works best for this project. Making subtle changes. And I don't like that last part, so I'm gonna go back and hit the back button. There we go. Okay, and you keep working that way. And uh, that's, so to save this now, you would go to the file menu and you see it says save as. So you can go through and you can t change the name if you want. Typically, because I'm lazy, I don't usually change the name, and it just will label it Untitled 61. So I hit Save. It tells me it's saved. To open this file back up later on, if I needed to, I would go to the Open menu and that File menu there up on the upper left-hand corner. Hit Open. Right, and you can see all the previews of all these other projects that I have and done over the years, just kind of stored here, right? I don't name things because you can see a window and you get a preview of everything that you've been working on. So, but if you want to go ahead and put a name on things, that's totally fine. So because it was the last piece that I worked on, Untitled 61, if you tap that, <clears throat> it comes back on, and there you go. So I'm going to scale that back, and that's about it for this first demo.